Example 47. Find the probability of a subject having a false positive result given that the subject has a positive result. Okay, so in this problem, the table has been a little cut off the wording here, but basically the subject was being, or the test results were based on whether the subject was using marijuana or not, and they had urine-based um, drug test that was trying to detect the marijuana usage. So these columns actually are the real information. In other words, they've um, confirmed that these people here did in fact use marijuana. So they might have used a more strict test like a blood test or a hair sample or something. And this column is for the people who did not use marijuana. And again, that would have been confirmed independently by the researchers using some other method that's more accurate. And then they had these individuals go out to clinics and take drug tests. So the positive test results are given here and the negative test results are given here. So that's the data we're working with. Now the problem itself is asking us to find a probability, and they're only selecting one subject from the sample of 300 subjects, so that's important. But then they're going on to tell us that we want to find the probability of a person having a false positive result given that the subject has a positive result. So the wording here is indicating that this is a conditional probability problem. The reason why is because it's a probability problem, first of all. They're only taking one subject, and we have this phrase, given that. And then they're giving us some condition that must be true before we try to find this probability. So this given that phrase is a key phrase that indicates conditional probability. So let's write out the statement here as follows. So it's the probability of a subject having a false, right, a false positive given that the subject has a positive result, right, positive result. Okay. If you want to do this problem using the shortcut method, it'll work out the most efficient way that way. So I'm going to start with that method. And what we're going to do with that method is we're going to focus our attention only on the column or row that has this condition. Only the column or the row that has that condition. So if I look at the table here, there's going to be a column or a row of data that has this condition of positive results. So positive test results is this row here, this first row of data, right? That first row in the table of data corresponds to positive results. What we're going to do in the shortcut method is only focus our attention on that row, meaning that we will only take numbers to solve this problem from this row. We will not take numbers from anywhere else. If we take a number outside of this row, we're doing the problem wrong. And if you think about it, there are only three numbers in this table that belong to this row. And one of them is a total. That's going to have to be our denominator then. So we already have half of the problem solved just by putting 143 at the bottom here because that's the grand total for the positive test result column, which is the only column we're paying it, or any row, pardon me, that we're paying attention to here. And then we have this false positive. So in other words, from the remaining two numbers that are left over, which one corresponds to a false positive? Well, there's either going to be this one or this one. Let's look at this number and see what it represents. These are 24 people who did not use marijuana, but the test says they did because it gave them a positive test result. I would say that's a positive that's an error, or in other words, that's a false positive. So that means there are 24 people who had a false positive. The grand total for this row is 143, so we end up with 24 over 143 as our answer. If we work that out just to see what it is numerically, we'll get 24 divided by 143, and we get an answer of almost 17%, or in other words, uh, 0 0.168. So almost 17%, so quite large actually, very high. So what this is saying that among the people who have positive test results, about 17% of those are errors or false positives. So that's pretty severe. That means you can't really trust these positive results because two, there's too high a percentage or proportion of them that are mistakes. All right, so that was the shortcut method, and that's the best way to do the problem. Again, the way we did that is we followed the phrase given that. What comes after the phrase given that is what we put after the line. So it's going to be false positive, right, false positive, given that, and then we follow what follows that. So given that the subject has a positive result, so positive result. And then from there, we focus all our attention on this part here, the positive result part. We pay attention only to that row. Once we've looked at that row exclusively, we pick the total of that row to be the denominator. And then we have to just figure out what remaining number corresponds to this category, which is false positive. And in this case, it was the 24. Now, had we wanted to use the 
proper formula, we would have actually used this set of notation. We would have done probability of false positive given positive result, just like we did before, right? But then we would have had to set up a fraction that says probability of false positive and positive result divided by the bottom part, which would have been probability of a positive result. And without spending too much time in this, I just want to tell you that false positive and positive results, that intersection, right, they want to know where do these two categories overlap. Well, they actually overlap at just the false positive, don't they? Because aren't all false positives also positives? So if you want to know where these two categories are the same, we're basically looking at a scenario where we have what? The set of positive results, and as a part of that, some of them happen to be false, right? But they're completely swallowed up by the positive category, because remember, false positives are first and foremost positive test results. They just happen to be positive test results that are false, right? So the positive test result group either has false test results or true test results. The part that's false, or the false positives, are completely swallowed up by the positive group, because that's what they are. And so if you want to know where these two things intersect, they intersect here, and of course that's the false positive category. So this intersection just reduces to this, and then you would divide by probability of positive results, right? But this is the hard way to do the problem. And then this separate probability is going to be basically what we did before. It would be the number of false positives over the grand total. So if we have number of false positives over total, that would be the first fraction. And the second fraction would be the number of positives over the total. Now the total here would refer to the grand total, right? Which we did not use last time. But if we fill this in, number of false positives we already said is 24. That's 24 over the grand total of 300. And then the second fraction is the number of positives. Well, positives, there's 143 of those over the total of 300. We can see that the 300s would then cancel out, giving us 24 over 143. Same answer we found before. That, however, is a very long way to do the problem. It's long and tedious, and so we generally don't have to do that when given a table of data. All we have to do is focus our attention only on the positive test results, right? And then from that data there, from that row or column of data, we're going to pick out the total to be the denominator, and then the, the rest over number that corresponds to this statement will go on top, and that's it. So it's really a lot faster. And uh, you know, this sort of thing, again, is, is definitely not needed in most problems, especially if they give us a table. But it's important to know the formula and how it breaks down for each problem, so you should at least uh, practice that a few times. And there are videos on that here if you want to look at the concept video for conditional probability.